Hello all. Uh, in this session, we will discuss about public good and private good. So, a kind of good, there are basically four types of good we will slowly learn, but a kind of good uh, like what characteristics it has in terms of its economic values and all. So, which uh, we define based on two important parameters. Number one is excludability. And number two is rivalry in consumption. What is excludability? Excludability is basically which says a person can be prevented from using a commodity that good or commodity yeah, or a service, good or service this is excludability. What is rivalry in com, uh, consumption is one person's one person's consumption of that good will diminish the chance of others usage. Is now, I will try to explain. Excludability is when a person can be prevented from using a particular good or services. What does that mean? That everybody is not entitled to avail a particular commodity or a particular service or to enjoy a particular commodity. Often in a market we see that if a person pays the a price is attached to a commodity. So, if a person pays then the person can avail or utilize a good or service. If they do not pay they cannot. So, there is an excludability you pay and you use like I, I want to go to a private clinic. I pay for the doctor's uh, fee and I, I get his treatment or her treatment. If I do not, I cannot. Right? And the second thing is that rivalry in consumption. Say there are too many uh, patients in a particular government hospital. Right? People are lying on the f uh, floor. We have seen, you know, in one bed in a pediatric ward, three children are sharing a bed. Pathetic. Right? So, uh, that means there is a rivalry in consumption, everybody is fighting for that bed, for a bed or for some basic amenities towards uh, their treatments. Yes, nobody is being said no basically, but there is a rivalry. If somebody gets a bed and if say by norm uh, one bed should be utilized by only one person and that means there is a rivalry. That means if one person is using the bed, the other cannot, but nobody is saying him or her no that you cannot, right. Okay. So, based on these two parameters, we decide that which with which characteristics which will be the name given. Let us see that we will try to form a kind of a contingency matrix where whether the group is excludable or not. So, I will form a box. Yes, and then the second parameter is whether there is rivalry in consumption or not. Right? And I can say yes, there is an excludability, yes, and there is no excludability, no. And yes, there is a rivalry in consumption and no, there is no rivalry in consumption. Hence, a particular good which has rivalry in consumption as well as excludable 
yes both rivalry there is a rivalry in consumption and they are excludable they are known as private goods yes they are known as private goods because to avail that particular good you need to pay a particular fee price charge at the same time if you do not you are excluded number one number two there are too many people who want to avail that particular good so there is a rivalry in consumption right so you want to go to a uh, you want to meet a doctor who is very busy you have to take an appointment you delay to take that appointment you know you may not get to see the doctor and maybe he pays a visit you know or he he is just available maybe twice a month that's all so there is a rival in consumption and then the doctor is a private good i mean the, or the, his service is a private commodity right similarly we can have a condition where no price is attached that is there is there is no excludability nobody can be said no you are not entitled to use this particular commodity at the same time there is no rivalry in consumption that means that you know anybody and everybody can avail that there is no rivalry in consumption if i am availing a system nobody can actually say that no you know you are availing and that is why i cannot avail right even if it is free right so if there is no rivalry in consumption either as well as there is no excludability you know everybody has the same right then that is known as a public good a basic health care expenditure of this uh, example of this public good can be um, awareness generation campaign you know some awareness they are uh, some ngo or the government uh, the health workers accredited social health workers asha the auxiliary nurses midwives they are probably just you know distributing uh, leaflets on what to be done in terms of antenatal checkup during the pregnancy um, or something on hiv aids everybody who they come across or they are giving those leaflets to every household in a particular village or in a particular taluka or whatever yes so they are not charging anything no price is attached to that everybody is getting rich poor hindu muslim uh, any caste any uh, education background everybody getting that because it is free of charge number one number two there is no rivalry in consumption because if i am getting it's not that my next house neighbor they may not get it they have ample and they are just distributing one in each household you know eventually they may have extra right so that can be a perfect example of public good but at the same time uh, these are you know extremes but there can be uh, there can be other commodities for this particular two boxes where one is no price is attached so um, you know it's it's free it's free it's uh, there is no excludability but at the same time there have there has a, a rivalry in consumption so it can be common resources they are known as common resources that means a very crowded government hospital yes there is a rivalry in consumption at the same time no charge uh, is attached you know nobody has to pay anything just forget about the user fee that they have to pay a, something for the ticket or something that's a nominal one so that can be a com example an example of common resources so even if they don't have to pay at the same time there is a high rivalry of consumption because the demand is enormous yes the fourth one is where they have to pay but there is no rivalry in consumption 
you know. So, let us just take an example that um, okay, uh, this is known as natural monopoly. Natural monopolies, very different from monopoly. Yeah, natural monopolies. Now, what uh, by by its basic definition, uh, what does it say that the natural monopolies are? Say, for an example, the hospital has a, um, a fire protection scheme. Yes, I am being treated by the hospital. Who is paying for that? The hospital. Let's say it's a government hospital. Yeah. So, and they have a fire protection scheme. The government is paying for that. I am not paying for that. And there is a fire outbreak in that hospital. Who is being saved? Not only the government employers, I mean employees. I am the patients are patients, uh, the patient parties, you know, the families of the patients, the other visitors, everybody is being saved. So, there is no rivalry in consumption and if the fire is being doused off, you know, it is not that uh, it is, you know, there is no consumption basically. So, whoever is inside the building or around the building are being saved, but they are not paying for that, right. So, if even if somebody else is paying, but those who are getting the benefit, there is no rivalry in terms of getting the benefit, these conditions are natural monopolies, yeah. So, uh, uh, when you know just to give you a, a clear idea if we take some random examples of you know apart from this healthcare um, or around healthcare it can be anything you know. So, the private goods can be the medicine I take from the private uh, clinics. Yes, the diagnostic centers where from where I get the diagnostic it can be my ice cream right it can be anything. Uh, it can be the private hospitals. Similarly, the public good can be you know the national defense, right. Basically, none of us are paying for that separately. It is it is coming from the earmark uh, taxes, the, from the government budget, government's revenue. So, uh, but even if those who are not paying taxes, that means indirectly also they are not paying the poor ones, they are not paying for the national defense but they are getting the benefit, right. So, uh, and there is no rivalry in consumption. If I am getting the benefit, everybody else around me is also getting the benefit. Everybody inside India is also getting the benefit. So, uh, it is a perfect example of, you know, the public good or any, um, say, information about a weather calamity, information about a disease outbreak. Yeah, this, this, this everything is public good, because if something is being, you know, uh, broadcasted or telecasted over uh, some national media, which is for which, you know, do not have to make any payment, but you are getting the information, that is kind of a public good. The uh, next can be the common resources. The common resources can be the, uh, you know, congested non toll roads. Because in a non toll road, you do not have to pay any taxes, you are not paying any taxes, but because there is high traffic, so there is a rivalry in consumption, right. Apart from that crowded hospital is the same thing, yes. So, because of this heavy traffic, there is a rivalry in consumption. Everybody wants a space, you know, the bike squeeze through, the uh, auto squeeze through, the cars are standing, and all this mess. And that you know any road within the city, you know the Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore. So there is no uh, taxes basically, non toll. There is no toll fee within the city. So uh, it's uh, there is a uh, it's no excludability, but there is a rivalry consumption, common resources. It can be, a, say a park, you know a small park uh, in a polluted locality. So for a you know some freshness everybody in that locality they want to go to the park and it is so crowded then. So, it has you know, so even if it is there is no excludability, it is free to enter, enter the park. So, but uh, in search of that uh, better end of environment, everybody is availing that. So, there is a rivalry in consumption. Um, I have seen that you know in, in uh, some places in uh, there is a park in Bangalore and that, that, and that is so crowded. Uh, because you know it is within the city and then that is very, very crowded. You cannot really do a morning walk peacefully over there. Uh, 
and uh, the another uh, one is the natural monopoly say this natural monopoly i have got a uh, tv connection you know say this dish tv connection where this lecture is being broadcasted you know so i have paid for that but anybody who wants to listen to that lecture can come in and that really doesn't reduce my chance to uh, get the information or to watch the tv or to listen to the lecture you know so anybody if the house is uh, bigger if the tv is bigger anybody can actually sit and uh, get to know but who is paying maybe somebody else one person is paying for that dish tv or some other dth right so that is a natural monopoly so having said that uh, in terms of that uh, you know uh, different kinds of goods when uh, we look at this private good public good natural monopolies or common resources especially there are uh, serious social implication in terms of this private good as well as public good you know, when we talk about the uh, health systems so but at the same time uh, there are when we talk about these implications uh, and uh, about uh, of the health products or health services basically we we look at the health services or we desire the health services to be public good and as well as common resources because we don't want to pay anything it is not we don't want to pay anything but it should be the government's responsibility any developing developed country it has been government's responsibility the government uh, governments take care mainly most of the developing countries and that is why the share of budget towards the healthcare expenditure is more and then the out of pocket expenditure has remained low in those countries so what is so typical about this common resources and public goods so this common res public goods and common resources the first most important point is no excludability right for both of these or either of these i am not paying any user fee so people cannot be prevented people cannot be prevented from using it using them but at the same time for public good it may be there is no rivalry in consumption but for common resources there is rivalry in consumption right so for public good rivalry in consumption and because there is no price attached to it there can be an over usage there can be an under usage right and looking at this over usage under usage the benefits and then the costs of the government because under usage means wastage of resources with wastage of potential so it has an opportunity cost or the government's budget share is not utilized being utilized properly or government's budget so that means there is a cost because it is going unutilized so we uh, so if there is a question of efficiency or inefficiency we talk uh, we talk about them in two uh, ways one is positive externality and negative externality now what is positive externality uh, we will discuss in detail about positive externality but still what is positive externality positive externality is where my social benefit is greater than the cost often private cost 
Yes. What is negative externality? Where my social benefit or I, I will here I will write my benefit is lesser than my social cost. Yes. So, this social benefit or social cost is it is not only including private benefit or private cost, but, but some external benefit as and external cost. Now, I am utilizing that. So, I have a benefit, but because I am utilizing that somebody else can also have a benefit. Right. So, that together is social benefit, even if they are not paying. So, say for uh, natural monopolies, even if the hospital is paying for this fire protection system, I am also getting a benefit. Even if the hospital is you know have doing some uh, waste management, so people around staying around the hospital are being benefited. So, they, uh, the, the, that is the uh, social benefit or social cost can be if I have a negative impact on the society of smoking and anything apart from those who are basically producing or consuming. So, their own benefit, their own cost is the private benefit and private cost. So, when my social benefit is more than my uh, private cost or eventually social cost if, if you can take care of the external cost as well, then there is a positive externality. And when the benefit is less than the social cost, then there is a negative externality and both this can occur out of public goods as well as common resources. We will learn how. Yes, the first problem what public goods face is free rider problem. Is a free rider problem. Now, what does this free rider means? Free rider that I ride a bike or a car every day, you know, with somebody, with my friend or somebody, but I do not pay for the petrol or the diesel, I pay do not pay for the fuel but I am give, getting a free transportation. Yes, so that is a free rider problem, free rider. Now, this free rider by the, you know, uh, by the word or by the phrase, it is easy to understand the uh, concept, but basically this free rider problem means, because people do not pay, but they also continue receiving the benefits. So, it can be defined as person who receives, I mean uh, not this, a free rider can be defined as person who receives a benefit of a good or service, but avoids that means it is intentional paying for it. Yes, so intentionally I am avoiding to pay for that particular service I am getting. I am just you know uh, trying to oh, okay fine I am just taking this benefit okay let me enjoy. Yes, so that is the free rider problem. Say if somebody has a health card I am utilizing that for my health benefit and maybe the person has paid for that health card or he pays a subscription fee. You know, uh, so that is where you know a free rider problem can occur and if there is a free rider problem it discourages the private players to join the market because then there will be people who are not paying but who are availing those services, right? And that is a loss for the private companies. They are the profit-making agencies, so they they cannot entertain that. 
that you know the people they are not paying but availing the services but it's very difficult to you know uh, to get rid of because what happens is uh, when uh, in case of say what happened in public goods a person is not supposed to pay right so why this free rider problem is coming but then you just take it simply that the government is paying the person is not paying but there is a moral hazard they are trying to utilize that benefit what we see that it is very easy to get a below poverty line card right you i i can influence some people i get a bit of poverty line curve card in that uh, the data the survey in national family health survey it is found that a wealth index based on say 33 or 34 uh, this you know the wealth assets the the assets they have estimated the wealth index it can be the fridge tractor television phone you know all this land so they have estimated an index and it has been found that even there is a considerable percentage of people who are coming from the highest wealth quintile that the top 25 percent i mean 20 percent quintile five groups top 20 percent they also possess a, a considerable percentage i don't really remember that they also have a bpl card because there is another question that whether you have a BPL card or not. So, it is very easy to get a BPL card. When you have a BPL card, you can avail these health schemes, yes, which are supposed to be those for those who are genuinely uh, under the poverty line, below the poverty line. But who are getting that? Now, it eventually increases the cost of the government. And that is where no private company is basically interested to give, to do a charity or you know to give uh, uh, this thing, uh, a health care, uh, health care to uh, provide the health care at a very low cost. Because they fear that if they have kept the cost low for certain section of the population, it can be misutilized and which will eventually increase the cost of their operation because they have segregated the market based on a target population. Yes, so for public goods, it is difficult to exclude and therefore, the free rider problem are you know supposed to appear and once there is a free rider problem, uh, you know the private organizations are completely discouraged uh, from supplying their goods or services in that particular market. But where the government can find a remedy, it is only the government can find the remedy because if the private, you know, if the government cannot reach to all the people, they expect the private system with quality health system, quality uh, support, they will come up. But with this uh, free rider problem, they do not, and then again it comes back to the government they have to find a solution that whether to keep that a public good or not how do they decide the first thing they do or they try to understand is one that whether the total benefit of one public good is greater than its costs right therefore if the total benefit if the total benefit is more than the cost then there is a significant Im impact on the society or it's it's considerable then they will uh, continue uh, with the good keeping them as non excludable you know that means a public good and otherwise, if they find that the benefit is actually lesser than the cost, because eventually those who are utilizing them, they are not supposed to utilize them. To, now, 
if a 2 rupees rice, kg rice are supposed to be distributed for those who are marginally poor and finally are being enjoyed uh, or you know being shifted to the private market and then the being enjoyed by those uh, who do not really require them. Then if the target was to decrease the malnutrition, yes the malnutrition does not come down because though those who are getting that rice they are not undernourished. Those who are undernourished finally they are not getting that, uh, that rice or by that amount what they are supposed to get. That means they are remaining undernourished. So, the benefit is not increasing where the government now with not much you know uh, without seeing any considerable or substantial improvement the cost now the government pushes more and more the cost increases and then the benefit sorry it declines. So, this can get reversed at the cost is more than the uh, I mean benefit and then they will decide no no I am not going to give this benefit anymore if there is no any political agenda I am not going to continue with this because it is no more a public good but and it is not serving as a public good anymore. Therefore, the first thing is that they need to understand that way that the total benefit is more than its costs. The second thing is that pay for it from with the taxes if it, it has to continue as a public good pay for it from the tax revenue. Yes, so the cost is actually you know uh, made up in terms of the uh, or through the tax revenues and then the third is if it is a public good and genuinely serves the purpose then it is good for all. everybody is better off. Yeah, so, it is it's, it's primarily government's decision um, that way that they will continue with this you know with a particular program with a particular scheme can be it a scheme uh, against uh, you know undernutrition can be a scheme against anemia it can be a scheme against uh, social health insurance program anything or you know the maternity benefits anything. Um, so, uh, it has often been asked a question that whether a particular uh, health care or oh, okay. before that uh, you know uh, we, we try to understand that how uh, the, the government does this cost benefit analysis because this is nothing but the cost benefit analysis yeah they are try they are trying to see they are trying to see the difference between the benefit and cost and if the benefit is more than the cost then there is a positive benefit. So, the government does a cost benefit analysis. In health as we, uh, we learned that it is very difficult to quantify health or health outcomes easily or as a single uh, outcome you know it is a combination of multiple goods. So, uh, when we do a cost benefit analysis it has often been challenging. So, um, but the government decides based on the you know how good is the benefit as compared to the cost. And uh, so, if we need to keep that the difference between the benefit and cost positive and substantially high then you know in what quantity what commodity has to be supplied in which areas have to be supplied in what quantities have to be supplied everything has to be worked out. But let us take a simple example to learn about how this cost benefit analysis works. Now, so for a public good. we try to estimate both the costs all costs yeah and kind of all benefits together all costs and all benefits and if it does not have any price signals to observe then it is a problem but then we have to take some proxies for that you know if there is no price signal. So, uh, and often this cost benefit analysis while we are doing this cost benefit analysis we kind of um, take help of approximate uh, estimations and while doing that approximate estimation say we uh, let us take a very simple example that what is the benefit of a um, new traffic signal you know a traffic light. Yes. 
yes it can be a traffic light it can be a um, say uh, immunization program it can be anything you no know? so a new traffic light because that traffic light uh, in that particular junction not having a traffic light there is an accident in that particular locality so the government decides okay what will i gain if i have a traffic light so the benefit is increased visibility and safety right once i increase the visibility and safety there is a lesser, lesser chance of accidents lesser death Now, this road accident is a serious public health concern, lesser deaths and we estimate that the, the proportion of death or the percentage of death because of accident in that particular locality comes down say from uh, 26 percent to 1 point or say 1.6 percent. So, the how much? 1 percent, right? So, 0 0.01, right? So, by 0 0.01 unit, the number of deaths come down. Very good. Now, this cannot be, uh, you know, the cost benefit analysis is often uh, estimated in terms of the same unit, you know, it is and basically it is a monetary estimation. So, both the cost and benefit should be monetarily uh, estimated. So, once we are trying to estimate benefit, we have to give it a monetary value. Now, this, uh, this is in percentage form that how many deaths were in uh, 100 deaths, how many we are saving, right? That is 1, you know, 0 0.01 out of 1. Now, to estimate the human life, we have to attach a human value for that life, you know, for one life if I save, how much value I can uh, like add to, so or how much value, uh, you know, in monetary terms I can save. So, when I am putting a value on human life, I think of several uh, uh, several aspects. One is their own productivity, number one. Number two is the compensation needs to be given. Number three is the you know uh, several opportunity costs. You know maybe the uh, cost of the vehicle. You know the g giving uh, other social security schemes to the family, providing other social security schemes, the monetary compensation, and everything together is the cost uh, of the human life, and that can be the benefit of the human life, right? Because their productivity is a direct benefit, and the opportunity costs are also the benefits foregone, right? So that uh, uh, that that is a total benefit. So if I can, you know, uh, put it, I can, I would say I have kept it like 100,000 rupees, you know, or say uh, it should be more in fact, yeah, say 10 lakh rupees, yes, 10 lakh rupees. So, if the value of a human life is total 10 lakh rupees and the probability of, you know, saving a life is 1 percent or 0 0.01. Therefore, the expected benefit is probability of death multiplied the value of human life, yeah? say value of human life, which is 0 0.01 multiplied by Yes, this is nothing but 1 by this divided by 100. So, I can keep as 1, 2, 3, 4, 10,000, right? 1 hundredth of 10 lakhs is 10,000. 
So, 10,000 rupees is the expected benefit of having a traffic light, putting a traffic light. But the cost of putting a traffic light, if it is only say 3,000 rupees, there is a benefit, net benefit of 7,000 rupees, which is nothing but the difference between 10,000 and 3000 that is my net benefit and then the government continues as a keeping uh, the you know uh, putting traffic lights in those that particular stretch as a public health intervention and um, a public good they, they continue it with uh, as a public good and then they approve putting these traffic lights however when we have common resources When we have common resources, they are neither excludable I mean not neither excludable, uh, excludable they are not excludable, but there, there is a rivalry in consumption. And because of these characteristics, there is a tragedy of commons. There is tragedy of commons. Commons come from the common resources. What is this tragedy of commons? That when common uh, resources disappear, when common resources are used more than desirable amount. Say the park, right? So, the park if there is you know uh, no entry fee, so it is it's not excludable. At the same time, the rivalry in consumption, in terms of the rivalry in consumption, there is a rivalry in consumption because it is in high demand and a lot of people are entering the uh, park to, to have their morning walk or a hospital, a government hospital. You know. So, there is a serious uh, rivalry in consumption, but then the tragedy of the commons occur because this tragedy of commons do not occur at the very first level when the commodity or the service is a public good because then there is no rivalry in consumption. But looking at that there is no uh, entry fee, there is uh, no cost at associated, no price associated. So, people get interested and if it get, gives a uh, nice benefit, people get interested and then they start using uh, more and more and more and more and more and then it develops a rivalry in consumption. The moment there is a rivalry in consumption, then the system is utilized more than it is desired and then the system cannot or may not work on the most efficient manner. That is what we see happening in the government hospitals that uh, as you know there is a heavy footfall as compared to its you know uh, what it can generally take or it is supposed to take. Uh, naturally, the number of uh, you know the 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 uh, people who do not have beds or who do not get treatment for a longer period of time increases, right? And that is the tragedy of common. And uh, however, what happens is some social and private incentives can work out. That uh, how the social and private incentives work out. Um, this is because say now to decrease the load of, of from that hospital, the government can decide to rope in some private hospitals. Yes, the government extends some say tax uh, benefit to them or some subsidies are offered, 
but uh, what happens this actually takes uh, the load out of these government hospitals and many people under a particular scheme can also take uh, benefits from some uh, private hospitals and it has been found in uh, you know in uh, in the, this Yashashini scheme uh, and also uh, Vajpayee Aragyashri scheme in Karnataka that there are several uh, non-governmental organizations or private organizations which have joined with the government and extends the benefit or the cashless benefit under that particular scheme uh, which is which has been floated by the government as the does the government hospitals or has to the government hospitals. So, this social and private benefits offered uh, or incentives offered may help this tragedy and commons. Otherwise, you know, we, uh, and it, it can result into a negative externality. It started with a positive externality, but it can uh, result into a negative externality. Because if, you know, um, my, I, I do not have any cost as such, but the my benefit is decreasing and decreasing. And then, the uh, you know the 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 organize the the park administrator or the hospital administrator decides to increase some user fee or entry fee, introduce some entry fee, which increases the cost overall for the patients or the uh, you know the morning walkers. But you know it doesn't really decrease the load. So there is a so the cost increases and then the benefit really doesn't increase or doesn't change much. In fact, in fact, it can go down with you know, uh, and because from our non no excludability, the excludability cannot be suddenly brought in in a large extent. So it's a slow process, and it may not be possible in in most of the cases, especially in terms of healthcare. Therefore, there is a you know this negative externality. may uh, maybe there in in case of a common resource and then a tragedy of commons you know with the negative ex externality in case of both the production and consumption however uh, when we talk about the um, you know the negative externality is we are talking about mostly the opportunity cost because here nobody is paying a cost user fee initially and uh, the cost is in terms of if I, I do not get a bed but I my patient or I personally uh, deserve a bed and then not having bed I am not probably getting the best of the treatment and then this the you know the over utilization of the system is actually diminishing my uh, my satisfaction or it's it's my uh, what i gen i must require or my i must have and it's actually decreasing the efficient productivity or efficient health outcome or health services or my improves my health status what it should have been um, so naturally there is a negative externality so the cost and the benefit in terms of the negative externality is not probably uh, or not mostly uh, the cost component estimated in terms of a direct cost, but mostly in terms of an indirect cost as well as this opportunity cost or sunk costs. Anyways, um, and that is primarily because the common resources are extensively used and that is why they are different from this public goods. But however, government can certainly regulate this problem, uh, how that government can uh, pitch in and then you know uh, increase the taxes or um, say bring some regulation that okay fine during this to this period uh, in a particular hospital there will be free uh, treatment and uh, beyond that period people have to pay charges or you know just make some uh, uh, you know bring excludability for a certain section of the population that those who are under this category they will only get this treatment so that reduces the load for the from that hospital the rest they have to pay a general charge or uh, you know the just turn the common resources if it d really doesn't improve just slowly turn the common resources into a, pub, a private good but again it is not uh, really possible in case of the government hospitals or government health system in a poor country that is not possible so or even in a uh, richer country when we talk about the universal health coverage when we talk about the uh, universal acceptability the affordability uh, the building blocks it's not really possible so uh, therefore 
you know, uh, it's, it's really a dicey situation for the government that uh, how to increase the efficiency when there is a tragedy of commons. Well, see, the free rider problem can be mitigated and maybe government is not really bothered about the free rider problem, but the common resources or the tragedy of the commons can really have a negative impact on the service delivery in terms of the health sector. Um, again, there is, you know, the uh, in health insurance market, this private good and public good are uh, really, really uh, two separate entities which coexist together. That is the private uh, health insurance are those for which you you have to make a voluntary payment and you, you can customize your benefits, you get your benefits, you choose based on your preferences and the private insurance players are very clear that you don't pay for these based on your uh, preferences, based on your background, you don't pay for these, you are, we are sorry, we cannot give you the insurance. Whereas for the public health insurance, which is a public good, there is no excludability because, you know, it's most often it's mandatory and then the contribution from the patient's part is very, very low. So, there is no excludability or as it is mandatory, it can be, uh, you know, the, the contribution can be uh, taken as for granted that okay we don't mind paying for that and um, and then the next one is uh, there is no rivalry in consumption because everybody who is potentially under the same category they are supposed to get that uh, those insurances you know those social health insurances or uh, government provided health insurances so the, the private health insurances and the government uh, provided health insurances their objectives are very different and then in this you know developing uh, countries where the health system is really turbulent and you know uh, still finding its stability they are the private and public health systems are uh, literally you know complement each other um, otherwise you know it's difficult for the government health system to continue um, or to uh, achieve the complete uh, or universal health coverage that's uh, because they they don't have enough funds they don't have enough coverage and um, they, they once trying to reach to the poorest people they cannot actually ensure that uh, they are already uh, spending so much that um, they cannot ensure the say the health insurance or the free services to the uh, well of section and probably the well of section uh, can get their insurances or services from the private players in the market. So, this is how it works. Uh, however, while floating a particular public good or while floating a particular scheme that whether the government will continue with that making them uh, a public good or you know because after a public good a particular commodity with the uh, utilization or realization of the benefits maybe once the public good becomes the common resources or uh, maybe not have having a lot of choices so a public good now faces a lot of you know uh, uh, rivalry in consumption a uh, lot of patient fall so you know if there is not many hospitals so naturally in one hospital slowly people will start pouring in so the government has to uh, you know ha keep a track you know that way that they will because they are paying for that and they have an objective they have a goal they have a target so they have to understand that whether it is really the scheme this plot policies these plans are really working fine or not. So, when they are launching a new uh, public good, they have to keep a look on the vision. So, first thing they do is that establish a vision. The next is do a situation analysis that who will require, who will not require. Uh, how by how much it is required for which purposes it is required situation analysis you know whether the children also require or just their mothers require whether the elderly is required or only elderly women are requ uh, requiring these benefits so this is the situation analysis so that they can design the plan properly after situation analysis they have an idea about the situation so what they do so, uh, after situation analysis they will do a financial assessment because then they ha have to uh, prepare the budget so they do a financial assessment after doing the financial assessment then they will do the constraint assessment 
they will do a constraint assessment. So, uh, they, once they do a constraint assessment, that means that once they are, uh, you know, um, they are providing the funds which are the constraint which may arise in in the field when they are going for the implementation so the const uh, there is required the constraint assessment so that they can uh, the next time they are you know uh, or they have an additional budget if there is a problem or the next time they are floating they have a clear idea so they will continuously do a constraint assessment while uh, or uh, either before or during or continuously you know they, they have to do this uh, while uh, during the implementation and then they also need to figure out then these uh, constants if they arise then there will be strategies which are the strategies uh, you know for those <coughs> changes so which are the strategies they have to bring for these changes uh, if there are constraints. So, they have to find out the alternatives. Yeah, so, next after understanding these strategies for changes, now they are uh, really confident about themselves that they can uh, float this program and that, that can be successful and there comes the implementation of this public good and or the public scheme. And finally, they have to do a bit of monitoring and evaluation, not ev uh, a bit actually, a rigorous monitoring and evaluation, so that they can understand that the uh, the scheme the, uh, is moving towards the right target or goal based approach or they are actually going to attain the uh, what they have targeted. And then uh, after monitoring and evaluation, they slowly establish you know they complete the uh, program and then the final one is establish a new vision yes after you achieve that or even if you fail that then what you do you go back to do a situation analysis that why you have failed you know you do a situation analysis and then you consider again that if we have failed then again uh, to to you know to manage that or uh, to attain uh, the gap to bridge the gap what kind of financial assessment is required what kind of kinds constraints we have uh, you know uh, meta across and what could be the f possible solutions and so that this time we can uh, attain the goals and targets and this is how a uh, uh, government scheme or a public health scheme uh, should work or generally works so, thank you very much. So, this is all about the public and private good uh, in terms of healthcare. So, the, uh, the, you know, the debate remains that whether uh, the health uh, care is a public good or a private good and the answer often across the country is they are both. You know, the public good cannot be all to attain the accessibility, affordability, quality in most of the developing countries and uh, similarly they cannot be private good. You know, they should not be, they must not be a private good completely. So, they have to be a mix of both of them uh, so that it works uh, towards the universal health coverage. Thank you.